From the King 5 Newsroom, I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Everett. I'm here to talk to you about the Perseid meteor shower this weekend. I'm really excited about this one because, well, I, not only my opinion, a lot of people believe that this is the best one of the year, and it looks like conditions should be fantastic for it across the Pacific Northwest. we got a big building ridge of high pressure that's going to clear those skies out. Now, they won't be perfect, but together we'll walk through it and see if we can find some times where there'll be very little or no cloud cover, especially in your neighborhood, and get out there and see them. So, first of all, what I'm really excited about is that these meteors are the good ones. It will peak this weekend with clear skies and relatively no moon. In fact, it'll be a new moon on Tuesday, and what that means is there'll just be a little sliver of a moon off towards the east, and that means no light pollution. In fact, if you can get yourself away from the cities and get yourself out into a remote spot, looks like the skies will be perfect for getting out there and enjoying it. Now, these are the good ones. These are the ones that are quite often colorful. You'll see some blues, some greens, quite often some reds and some oranges, and as the picture suggests there, they quite often have tails, so they kind of hang out in the night sky. And another thing to know is that when they peak in some spots, stargazers say that sometimes they'll see up to about 90 of them per hour. Now, the key to this, at least in my own personal experience, is to get away from city lights. Again, the more remote, the better. So out near the coast, maybe out towards the mountains, or, well, you know how to get away from a city. And then the other thing that I've learned is bring something that allows you to recline. Standing there and tilting your head back can be really painful. In fact, I've learned from experience that standing and doing this for a long time, yeah, you'll get a neck crick. So bring a pillow, bring a blanket, or if you have one of those cool chaises or something that you can lay out on, that's definitely the way to go. The other thing is to be patient because it takes your eyes about 15 minutes to acclimate to the night sky. So a lot of people get out there and they're like, I don't see anything. Well, it takes a while for them to come into focus. And then once they do, you may actually be pleasantly surprised by how many you see. Now, the peak for them is in the middle of the night. We'll talk about that in a moment, but I just want to show you this. We've got a massive ridge of high pressure that's building across the region here. So this is Friday evening that I'm recording this and what you notice is that high pressure sends cloud cover and moisture away from us. So it's like we've got a perfect cone built around the Pacific Northwest that should keep those skies mostly clear. As we take a look at future radar here, in the overnight Friday into Saturday, we'll see some mid and upper level clouds, especially over the Cascades and the northern portion of Puget Sound and Hood Canal. So it stands to reason that down by Mount Crystal, Rainier, or even off towards the immediate coast or up towards the Olympics is the place to be. Looks like Bellingham and close to Mount Baker will be a nice window as well. Fast forward through Saturday into early Sunday morning. I think this is the much better window, and this is also when those conditions will be peaking as far as the meteors go. There'll be some cloud cover hanging out across the northern portion of Puget Sound and Hood Canal, but for the most part, Whatcom County looks great. The southern portion of the Cascades looks great the southwest interior, the Olympics, and the immediate coast should be fantastic for getting out and stargazing. And then obviously off towards the east, if you can get out near Wenatchee, or out towards OMAC, that's going to be perfect as well. You see those clouds kind of filter out there, and then by the time we get to Sunday, those skies are really going to start to clear. Now, one of the things that I want to point out here is that as high pressure builds across the region, that's going to change the wind flow a little bit. So we've been really fortunate so far that we haven't seen a whole lot in the way of wildfire haze, but as that high pressure builds in, flow around a high is always clockwise. So it's going to change those winds from westerly to more northerly, and that could push some wildfire haze. Not a lot. You can see from that little mediagram there, it's going to be low, but it could create a little haze over portions of the Cascades. The farther south you can get, the better. Now, taking a look at that high pressure in general, What's been amazing about our summer so far is that every time those oranges and reds sneak up from the south, you get those blues and greens associated with low pressure systems in their troughs that kind of suppress it and shove it back down towards the south again. Our little luck streak has run out here. Take a look at this. This high pressure is so strong, it's so pervasive that it's going to take that low and its associated trough and send it way up north into Canada. And then it doesn't touch down again until it gets to about the Great Lakes region. You also notice that that ridge is really going to kick in and amplify. So it's going to be great for clear skies. It's not going to be particularly great for temperatures. So let's touch on that real quick. If you haven't got the memo, we are tracking the potential for a heat wave next week. Saturday will be perfectly comfortable and pretty close to normal, which is about 78 degrees. But then take a look at that. Starting on Monday, we really start to see those temperatures whip up, and that's in the Seattle metro. It stands to reason that some of the spots could not only get into the low 90s, but possibly some mid 90s when this peaks on Tuesday and Wednesday. Taking a look 
look at your seven day forecast, here's how it lays out. It's definitely going to feel like August out there. So skies should be in pretty good shape for getting out and stargazing. Temperatures will be fairly warm during the overnights. And if you're concerned about the heat, don't worry about it at all because it looks like it's going to start to settle back down again as we go into next week and next weekend. It looks like Friday things start to settle back down again. So a couple things about the, the Perseids. Again, they're my favorites just because they're numerous, they're colorful, they have the tails, they're fairly easy to see. You don't even have to really look in a particular direction because it's just they're shooting across the sky. A lot of people say that you need to look towards uh, Perseid, which is one of the... Uh, um, the, the star clusters in the sky, but I don't think so. You just look up and you'll do just fine. A lot of people also wonder while they're sitting there looking at shooting stars whether these are meteors or not and if those meteors are actually going to strike the Earth. And the answer is no, because the origin of these particular ones is basically ice. So once they hit the Earth's atmosphere, the Earth's atmosphere is actually really good at disintegrating things as they try to enter, and ice and small rocks just don't stand a chance. So the chances of any of these coming and striking us while we're outside watching them is very, very low. The other thing, too, is to make sure you bring a lot of wishes with you because there is no scientific evidence that supports that making wishes is a silly thing. So get out there, enjoy, keep yourself safe, keep yourself warm out there, maybe bring a blanket with you and get out and enjoy that August sky. Soon enough, there'll be a lot of cloud cover out there and those temperatures will be cool. So that's it. Everything you need to know about the Perseids. Thanks for watching King 5. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Everett. Have a great weekend. Stay cool.